Nothing Ever Happens on 90th Street by Ronnie Schotter, illustrated by Kirsten Brooker. Ava unwrapped a cinnamon danish, opened her notebook, and stared helplessly at the wide, white pages. Write about what you know, her teacher, Mrs. DeMarco, had told her. So Ava sat high on the stoop and looked out over 90th Street, waiting for something to happen. A horn honked, a radio rapped, a kid cried, the usual. Nothing ever happens on 90th Street, Ava scribbled in her notebook. A few doors down, Mr. Chang was arranging fish fillets in his newly opened seafood emporium. No one was buying, and his shop looked as empty and ignored as the tiny boarded-up store next door to it. He nodded to a woman passing by and called hello to Ava. Out the door of Ava's building came Mr. Sims, the actor carrying his enormous cat, Oliver. Mr. Sims was on hiatus again, which meant out of work, in between shows, and so every day, dressed in his finest, he embarked on a daily promenade with Oliver under his arm. Writing, he asked. Trying to, Ava answered, but nothing ever happens on 90th Street. You are mistaken, my dear, Mr. Sims said. The whole world's a stage, even 90th Street, and each of us plays a part. Watch the stage, observe the players carefully, and don't neglect the details, he said, stroking Olivia. Follow an old actor's advice, and you will find you will have plenty to write about. Thanks, Ava said, and as fast as she could, using as many details as she could recall, Ava described Mr. Sims in her notebook, his felt fedora hat, his curly gray hair, his shiny button shoes. When she looked up, he was halfway down the street, and Mr. Morley, the moose maker, was at his window. Just as he did every day, Mr. Morley set his chocolate pot and coffee urn out on his ledge with a sign. Mr. Morley dreamed of having a catering business where the fanciest people demanded his dessert. But the trouble was, Mr. Morley's moose was missing something. No matter how he tried, his moose never had much taste, and Mr. Morley never had many customers. Writing? he asked. Um, hmm, Ava answered, chewing on her pencil. Try to find the poetry in your pudding, Mr. Morley said softly. There's always a new way with old words. You are right, Ava said, wishing Mr. Morley would one day find the poetry in his pudding. Taking his advice, she tried to think up a new way to describe the look of Mr. Morley's moose. Smooth and dark as midnight. Or maybe more like me. Yes, that was it, Ava thought, writing in her notebook. The door to the building slammed and a gust of wind sent dead leaves soaring and dipping like crazy kites. Alexis Leora nodded to Ava and stepped gracefully down the steps to do her warm-up exercises. Alexis was a dancer. When she wanted to, she could hold an extremely long leg straight up against her ear like a one-legged woman with three arms, but she couldn't smile. Ava decided it was because Alexis Leora was lonely. Writing? Alexis Leora asked Ava. Yes, Ava answered. Alexis Leora did six deep knee bends and then sighed. Stretch, she said sadly. Use your imagination. If your story doesn't go the way you want it to, you can always stretch the truth. You can ask, what if? and make up a better story. You're right, Ava said thinking. What if, what if Alexis Leora met someone? Would she smile then? What would that look like?
Ava closed her eyes to try to picture it, but all she could picture was soup. Spanish soup, rich and brown and so spicy it seemed as if she could actually smell it. She could. When Ava opened her eyes, Mrs. Martinez was standing beside her. She nodded to Alexis Leora as she handed Ava a bowl of soup. Have some, she said. Writers need soup. What's your story about? Nothing much, Ava sighed. Nothing ever happens on 90th Street. Add a little action, Mrs. Martinez said, like soup, a little this, a little that, and don't forget the spice. Mix it, stir it, make something happen. Surprise yourself. She nodded again to Alexis Leora and went inside. Ava put down her pencil and tasted Mrs. Martinez's wonderful surprising soup. She thought about her story. It wasn't wonderful. It wasn't surprising. But what could she do? Nothing ever happened on 90th Street. How could she possibly add a little action and make something happen? Ava had no ideas. She was stuck. Then, Mrs. Friedman from up the block came wheeling baby Joshua in his stroller. He was holding a bright red ball in two tiny fat hands. Bird, he called out to a pigeon hunting for something to eat. Bird, hungry. Pigeon, Mrs. Friedman told him. Ava sighed and looked down at her half-eaten Danish, then at her notebook. She looked at baby Joshua, then at the pigeon. She remembered Alexis Leora's words of advice. What if, Ava thought. Suddenly, she had an idea. What if she stood up, broke her Danish into dozens of tiny pieces, and scattered them wide and wild into the street? What would happen? Ava laughed to think of it. From lampposts and ledges, dozens of pigeons swooped down to dine on Danish. Ava eagerly picked up her pencil and began to write again. Bird, baby Joshua called out, pointing. More bird. He cried, panting. The bright red ball dropped out of his tiny fat hands and bounced onto the sidewalk. Bye-bye, ball, baby Joshua screamed. The ball rolled off the curb, into the street, and straight into the path of a pizza delivery man on his bicycle. Everyone gasped in horror. Alexis Leora paused in mid-plie and leaped to the rescue. She got there just as the pizza delivery man landed, right side up, at her feet. Alexis Leora looked down at the pizza man, and he looked up at her. And then something almost unimaginable happened. Alexis Leora smiled. Are you all right? She asked shyly. Her smile was sweet and bright. Her teeth were straight and white. It was the first time Ava or anyone on 90th Street had seen them. Yes, said the pizza man, smiling up at her. It was love at first sight. Pepperoni and peppers rained down on the happy couple. The pizza man pulled a pepper out of his hair as horns began to honk. Ava added this to her notebook and wondered what could possibly happen next. A long white limousine was honking its horn loudest of all. The limo driver rolled down his window. What'd you want to block traffic for? He called out. The back door of the limo opened and out stepped a woman in sunglasses, wearing a turban, and a coat the color of a taxi. There seems to be a problem, Henry, she said in a fake English accent. There's some sort of accident here, perhaps. It's Sandra, someone suddenly screamed, interrupting her. Sandra, can I have your autograph? Mrs. Martinez called out. Sandra Saunderson, Mr. Morley blushed. Was Ava dreaming? There, in the middle of 90th Street, larger than life, stood Sandra Saunderson, star of stage, screen, and the sensational soap opera, One World to Live In. Darling, what's happening here? I'm sure I... 
Larry, she called out suddenly and stretched her arms toward Mr. Sims, who had just returned from his promenade. It's been an age since we saw each other. Mr. Sims' cat, about to be crushed in an extravagant embrace, leaped out of Mr. Sims' arms to chase after baby Joshua's ball. Olivier, Mr. Sims called out, come back. Everyone raced into the street after the ball, but it was the limo driver who, in the right place at the right time, leaned into the gutter and picked it up. With a flick of the wrist, he tossed the ball to Mrs. Friedman, who presented it to a drooling but grateful baby Joshua. How's that for a throw? The limo driver proudly asked the crowd. No one, not even baby Joshua, had a chance to answer. Olivier, frightened by so many people, raced past Ava, scrambled onto Mr. Morley's ledge, where he knocked over his coffee urn, spilling all the coffee into his moose pot. Ruined, Mr. Morley cried, wringing his hands. At that, Olivier bounded to the top of the gingo tree, where he swayed dangerously like a heavy white balloon. Now he'll never come down, Mr. Sims lamented. He's terribly stubborn. There, there, Larry, Sandra Saunderson comforted. I'm sure someone on 90th Street will have a solution. Ava tried to imagine who that could possibly be. I have one, she heard Mr. Chang call out. Generously, he offered trout, fresh from his store, to Olivier. High up in the tree, Olivier barely blinked. Raw trout? Mr. Sim sighed. My regrets, Mr. Chang. He won't eat it. He's a gourmet cat. I'm afraid I've spoiled him. Whatever will I do? What if? Ava asked herself for the second time that day, and suddenly she had another idea. A truly great one. She whispered it to Mr. Morley, Mrs. Martinez, and Mr. Chang. Brilliant, Mr. Morley exclaimed, and with that, he, Mrs. Martinez, and Mr. Chang, still clutching his trout, vanished into the building. Ava righted Mr. Morley's coffee urn and stuck her finger into his ruined moose, then into her mouth to determine the degree of damage. Mocha, she called out in surprise. Mr. Morley's moose is mocha now, and she tried... She paused, trying to find the perfect word. Magnificent, she announced to the assembled throng, and giving the pot a stir, she dished out samples to all assembled. Delicious, Alexis Leora said, spooning some into the pizza man's mouth. Poetry, Sandra Saunderson pronounced. Now, on 90th Street, people who had never spoken to one another before were speaking at last. The pizza delivery man and the limo driver shook hands, and everyone tried to tempt Olivier down from his precarious perch. And then, Mr. Morley appeared on the steps, followed by Mrs. Martinez and Mr. Chang. Mrs. Martinez carried a large pot of her surprising soup, while Mr. Morley carried a platter of Mr. Chang's trout, now surrounded by many tiny vegetables and cooked to perfection. With the addition of a cup of Mr. Morley's cat-created mocha mousse, it was a meal worthy of the finest culinary establishment. Do you smell that, Olivier? Mr. Sims called, fanning the steam so it rose up the gingo tree. Olivier took one deep sniff and bolted down the tree to dine. Everyone on 90th Street sampled each course, and everyone on 90th Street sighed with delight. Superb! Fantastico! Yum! Ava smiled and glanced up from her notebook. For the third time that day, she asked herself, What if? Mr. Chang, she began, you and Mr. Morley and Mrs. Martinez are such great cooks. The board it up soared next to your seafood emporium. What if all of you used it for a restaurant? 
a restaurant? The three chefs looked at one another. What a wonderful idea, they said, shaking Ava's hand. Everyone on 90th Street could be our customers. You too, Sandra. Everyone but me, Mr. Sim said regretfully. Just now, I'm between jobs and a bit low on cash. No longer, Sandra called out. You'll be on my show. I'll arrange it. Mr. Sims kissed Sandra's hand and everyone cheered. What an amazing day, Mrs. Martinez said. Who would believe it if only someone had written it all down? I did, Ava announced, and she opened her notebook and began to read her story. The same story you're reading now about how nothing ever happened on 90th Street. What a story, Sandra exclaimed, full of detail, dialogue, suspense, a bit of poetry, a hint of romance, even a happy ending. Why, you'd almost think some of it was made up. Ava smiled mysteriously. Thanks, she said proudly, but just wait. It'll be even better after I rewrite it.